Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the another episode of Thoughtful Leaders. In today's session of Thoughtful Leaders, we have with us Dr. Yag- Rajiv Yadwarkar, who is currently the Dean of Faculty of Health and Biological Sciences, Zimbabwe International University. Welcome, sir, on our College Union platform. Thank you, Manish, for having me. Yes, sir. Thank you for sharing your availability, sir, for the interview session. So, with your permission, can we start with the questions? All set. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, sir, moving on to the first question, what is the latest program that you are offering in your institute? Well, uh, Manish, uh, the Faculty of Health Sciences, since its uh, establishment in 2002, always looked beyond, um, as healthcare beyond medicine. And therefore, we always encouraged a symbiosis of thought, word and action of healthcare professionals, whether they are doctors, nurses, paramedics, uh, administrators, dietitian, nutritionists, technologists and everyone so that we deliver a comprehensive and a holistic healthcare package because ultimately no disease or no problem can be created or can be treated by doctors alone. It has to be a team approach and when a team works in sync and in close connectivity it ultimately translates into better patient care and therefore better patient outcomes and therefore as a university, we thought that we are in the fundamental business business of raising trained manpower because tomorrow if I want to give good quality healthcare, the man behind the machine or the man delivering the healthcare is equally or if not more important. And therefore, we thought of diverging our energies or focusing on energies on raising a cadre of healthcare professionals which would ensure delivery of healthcare optimum healthcare services in this domain. So, there are many programs which are being run. There are many programs which are in the uh, near future to be commissioned. So, each of these programs seeks to improve healthcare delivery by qualified, trained and certified healthcare professionals. So, whether it's the Masters in Public Health program, which is a cliche program offered by so many universities, so we thought how can we deliver the program with a difference? How can it be? How can we make it more relevant to the Indian context? There's a BSc in mental health which we are planning, understanding the dearth of qualified mental health care professionals in the country, and any of these programs, in fact, seek to address the manpower or the HR challenges because of the poor or skewed ratio of healthcare professionals. In India, this is what the WHO recommends as the ideal doctor-patient relationship, nurse-patient relationship, or a healthcare professional-patient relationship. We launched certain programs in COVID care to train people, either the doctors, because every doctor cannot profess to have the same level of understanding and competency in treating patients of COVID-19. COVID care for nurses, COVID care for allied healthcare professionals, and we even launched a program COVID care for the community where the house members need to know how to treat patients of COVID in the unfortunate event of one of the family members testing positive for COVID. So we launched a certificate course for COVID-19 care for the community. There is the MSc Dietetics and Nutrition program which has got specialization in niche areas whether it's nutrition, nutrition genomics and genomics is emerging as a huge new avenue and arena in most disciplines, public health nutrition or for the matter clinical nutrition because the nutritional requirements of a diabetic patients are different from a patient of cancer, are different from a patient in kidney failure. So we need to have nutrition with nutritionists or dietitians with specific skill sets and competencies in this area. And with the paradigm shift of understanding nutrition with food, and with health ultimately, we introduce a new specialization of safety and quality management. Then there is a program of BSc in exercise and sports sciences, which the School of Sports Sciences has envisioned, where we would like to train in 12th graders and put them through a three-year degree program and train them to become specialists in exercise and sports sciences. There are programs which we are talking about, such as um, PG Diploma for 
allopathic doctors or non allopathic doctors understanding the fact that we doctors are trained on the clinical aspects but with the rapid advent of technology impacting healthcare delivery and sophisticated equipments coming in doctors are not trained or educated on the technological aspects of healthcare delivery so a doctor who has been trained at the has has spent four and a half years in one year of internship does not want to obviously would not like to go into a full fledged engineering degree so can we give him a short capsular course where we teach him the technological aspects of say cardiac care technology dialysis technology respiratory care technology where he thought about ventilators he thought about dialysis machines on and so forth as for the different specializations which you offer and make him a useful member of the healthcare delivery team in a hospital where he is not only adept on the clinical aspects but also can handle the respirator the ventilator the dialysis machine the treadmill so on and so forth so understanding how the healthcare sector has unfolded the lack of trained qualified and certified manpower we thought of meeting these societal driven needs and come up with innovative need based training programs and we are also coming up with establishing a faculty of uh, applied and basic sciences uh, physics chemistry biology which would provide useful trained manpower to support these uh, niche areas so that is in a nutshell an answer to your first question so there are a lot of many programs ultimately we need to understand that much as we curse covid we have to understand that covid covid has taught us one important thing that physical interaction may not be possible the new normal would envision and envisage the deployment of technology so then healthcare delivery people whether they are doctors nurses paramedics have to be tech savvy so we try to raise up the next generation of healthcare providers who are tech savvy by which i mean digital healthcare professionals who deploy technology to its fullest advantage okay that's sir. it to the first question yes sir uh, sir moving on to the next question uh, what are the factors that make this program the best for the students to opt well uh, symbiosis is synonymous with excellence and in the last 5 decades that we are in the in the space of education whether it's management whether it's law whether it's information technology whether it's engineering humanities and uh, applied uh, social sciences whether it is um, uh, media and communication architecture planning and design the eighth faculty the faculty of health and uh, biological sciences is always striving to live up to the uh, standards and high benchmarks set up by the symbiosis international university and therefore all these programs are in a way non conventional besides being the conventional mbbs and bsc nursing program we are having some of them are non conventional they are innovative and in that sense they are unique they are need based because they address the manpower shortage in these niche areas and therefore they have got a translational benefit and impact to society they have got a huge interdisciplinarity component they have got a skill and a component a uh, competency driven component which makes them uh, which makes the students market ready on soon as he passes out the assessment has got a focus on application rather than on rote learning and therefore the student emerges not only theoretically sound technically but also technically competent and industry ready to ensure that he is the right fit in any healthcare organization whether it's a hospital whether it's a insurance company whether it's an it company in healthcare whether it's the pharma sector whether it's medical equipment and devices whether it's in a consultancy so the idea is to meet what is what the market wants and what the society wants ultimate objective is that you and me as a common man on the street benefit from an improved healthcare delivery system okay sir uh, sir moving on to the next question what will be is you say the best practices of the courses that you are offering well some of the best practices um, at symbiosis international university are also inherent and applicable to the programs which we offer to the faculty of health sciences just to enumerate a few of them first is the focus and trust on academic excellence rather than giving didactic knowledge alone we instill in students the spirit of inquiry which helps him become a lifelong learner and try to instill in him 
global competency so that the student who turns out or passes out of symbiosis is competent or able to be placed in any of the global establishments either overseas or in global companies multinationals operating in india the second thing is the pedagogies of instruction are innovative so we don't insist on a routine uh, talk and talk um, you know click and mortar model of education but deployment of technology uh, is one such um, methodology innovative assessment strategies where we try to get the oski system objective structured clinical examination and objective structured nursing examination for the medical and the nursing students but also the fact that you got a lot of role play quizzes and other interesting pedagogies of assessment which try to assess whether the student has uh, understood the application of the knowledge other than again i'm saying the root enumeration of facts and hypotheses there's a huge amount of industry academic collaborations in different uh, dimensions i shall e- elaborate on it subsequently by which the industry perspective by which i mean the practical or experiential perspective is ingrained into the student there is also an academy academy collaboration see industry academy collaboration is a much touted word but you also need to understand that we need to have a lot of a symbiotic interaction understanding the best practices of our i would say competitors or more importantly uh, professional um, uh, institutions in the same fraternity because ultimate objective is to enhance the learning outcomes and in a better way and finally ensuring a societal connect by ensuring that every student undergoes um, a, a project which is societally driven which ultimately helps inculcate the right value systems amongst the students so that they emerge as uh, responsible global citizens beyond just having a theoretical knowledge base okay sir um, what are some of the valuable insights of the program that you are off- offering at your institute so all of the above which i mentioned are are uh, the, the the highlights or the usps of the program but we also do practice some amount of administrative um, you know uh, best practices by having an open door policy uh, grievance redressal cell uh, the ability of the students to engage in what we teach as participatory management accountability of the students on the you know, on the uh, on the learning process so we always tell the students that the more of learning that you will do, get at symbiosis rather than teaching which will be done by the faculty and the ability to gel into an ecosystem which is within the healthcare and outside of the healthcare encompassing the seven faculties other than the faculty of health sciences are some of the insights into the programs which ensure um, a good campus experience and a favorable learning outcome uh, matrix okay Sir, moving on to the next question how does the program ensures that the students are prepared for the future well as i said given the usps of these programs each of these programs strive to strive to produce market ready as i said competent uh, individuals who are fit 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 into the healthcare ecosystem and in doing so we are inculcating what we call and is often touted as 21st century skill sets personally i do believe that these are inherent and innate skill sets and they are just being glorified as being 21st century skill sets but the fact that these uh, skill sets whether it's transdisciplinarity where you encourage a symbiosis and interaction with professionals from different disciplines synergistic collaboration the adaptive agility which is expected of a professional by which i mean the ability to work with changing environment work and people is something which enables what we call as a cognitive flexibility and openness to accept other view points which ultimately leads to a cross fertilization of ideas and a better product the the ability to you know focus on the broader perspective and yet have the ability to zoom on to something minute in detail and all this ultimately harbors onto an important dimension which is emerging in today's world that of emotional intelligence and we need to have students with the right eq rather than the right iq alone iq may be found fairly well common but we need to have iq with the right people having a right blend and component and iota of eq 
and today probably most of the corporates would get people with the right IQ but they really have to do a lot of head hunting for people with the right EQ. Okay, uh, so moving on to the next question. How do you train your faculties uh, to deliver the, this program to the students? Well, the first part of the training is a rigorous stringent selection procedure. So we do a thorough background check of the faculty whom we want to recruit, going into in-depth analysis of the academics, the research credentials of the student, the standing of the student in academics or in industry, and the important fact that these students, these faculty are going to be the mentors for the Gen Next. Thereafter, the faculty have regular refresher training programs. There is a very robust performance appraisal mechanism annually, and the right incentives and the right characteristic mechanisms are used for the performance and the non-performance. We have a no-nonsense policy as regards weeding out the non-performance, and uh, as a member of the performance appraisal review committee, in fact, the chairperson, we make uh, we mince no words and we mean business in selecting and promoting. So there's a policy of what I always refer to as a R3, recruit, retain and restrain, by which we recruit the best talent, try to retain the best talent and restrain the person from leaving the organization by creating a very favorite, um, you know, uh, very favorable ecosystem by which we restrain the individual from leaving the organization. And this is on the basis of our M3 model, which I propagate. There has to be a mentoring of the faculty. There has to be a monitoring of the output of the faculty. And if need be, there has to be a mopping up by which I mean removal of the faculty from the ecosystem. So whether it's the R3 model or the M3 model, the training program, faculty development program, which are carried out by the in-house um, Symbiosis Teaching Learning Resource Center, all such uh, programs, uh, initiatives ensure that the faculty are kept on their toes. They are uh, uh, they are themselves market ready. They are key opinion leaders in their chosen field, and they help produce, mentor, and shape the lives of these young students who have invested their time, energy, and resources in joining symbiosis. Okay, uh, sir, how do you tend to build an industry connect with this program? Well, as I said, industry academia connect is a very important feature of our um, programs and the industry connect starts right from the day of the induction where industry captains are invited to address the students they're projected as role models their career path how they have evolved they are invited subsequently for guest lectures all streams of experiential learning are in the industry whether it's summer internship whether they are projects whether they are research studies are undertaken there is a strong, uh, you know, uh, 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 focus on industry connect by way of having a mentor and mentee relation, not only with the in-house full-time faculty, but an industry mentor also participating. There is a rigorous monitoring of these experiential states of learning. Students are invited to or encouraged to participate in conferences where industry captains participate. They are invited or encouraged again to participate in webinars. A lot of workshops are conducted where the industry captains are invited. The industry captains again are a part of our board of studies. They help in developing a syllabus or a curriculum which is industry uh, requirement. So that at the end of the academic program, I don't have to tell the industry to come and place my students. They have partnered in developing my student. They know how the student has been trained. They have participated or contributed to the program development as well as its implementation. They have observed the student in the state of experiential learning, whether by internship or by on-job training. So that at the end of two years, they know that, yes, this is the man I want for my industry. And therefore, placements are never a problem for us. The research mentors are from the industry. The, uh, the, the, there's a, there's a the, uh, initiative we call as the Leadership Development Series where we invite industry uh, stalwarts. All in all, there's a continuous exposure and in a way bombarding uh, of an interaction with the industry professionals so that the students are industry connected even before they pass out. And that's the reason why the students get placed even before they finish their final exams. In fact, that's a pain point for me where the industry wants the student to join 
even before the final exam results are out and the industry demands that the student should join them asap because the timelines in the industry are always you know neck breaking and the date of joining is always yesterday and not even today if not tomorrow okay sir sir moving on to the next question what were the challenges that you have faced while inculcating this program in your curriculum well challenges are not, never uh, you know a constraint uh, for implementing the requisite uh, innovations and reforms but yes certain administrative i would say challenges but certain administrative procedures which are in fact important as checks and balance mechanism under the university ecosystem regulatory challenges whether the ministry of education or the regulatory council aict uh, the national medical commission or the uh, bar council uh, that comes at a university level uh, the expectations and the perceptions of stakeholders and most important the mindset challenges of the students because students come at times with specific mindsets so there is a process of undoing before we can do something so but these are these are challenges which we as academics uh, love to face because it helps us work uh, you know uh, help the student to navigate these challenges and which helps the student emerge out as a better professional okay uh, sir so what are the different types of project that the students are working on uh, through this program well different projects uh, are undertaken by the students by uh, enrolling for the different programs so students of public health will engage in public health programs resilient health systems uh, covid 19 challenges the students of the healthcare management programs we talk about hospital based challenges of covid care the medical technology students would talk about technology based applications the deployment of technology so the programs the projects are in, in fact um, a take away or an offshoot of the different programs and consequently the placement opportunities they both also depend on the projects where the student has undertaken and completed successfully and managed to impress his boss during the period of uh, experiential learning okay sir moving on to the last question of the day what are the benefits and the career options after pursuing these courses well again uh, the benefits and the career options are different for different programs for example if you take the masters in public health they can become program managers or program associate in the development sector in the csr sector in national health mission of different um, states or even at the center they can become project leads in the ngos they can become research assistants or research associates in uh, social epidemiology health policy analysis uh, or in think tank organizations um we are saying that the uh, the the kind of mental health professionals would be we are definite value add to the crunch manpower as they got mental health so they can work with psychiatrists they can set up independent practice of course within the norm regulatory norms um the the uh, programs in medical technology uh, was a huge hit because the, the the technologies who emerge are placed even before they pass out because every hospital is hungry and thirsty or technologists who are qualified uh, trained and you know in that way of a mindset where they function as team members there is a huge you know, demand for dietitians in hospitals in the recreation and wellness centers in uh, in, uh, in research organizations and various uh, other establishments and the bsc in sports and exercise science is envisioned to produce a cadre of uh, fitness professionals or sports professionals would be deployed either in government sector uh, public sector undertakings or in private sector organizations with the reliance foundation focusing on so much on football kabaddi and traditional indian games also there is always a demand for qualified professionals who are you know trained into the niche areas of sports analytics sports technology sports performance uh, ergonomics so on and so forth so all in all these programs since they fulfill a societal need there is never a problem for placements and i always believe that the academics and your teaching and your training should be so um, firmly grounded to societal needs that placements become a by product that's that's the mantra of uh, programs and symbols uh thank you sir uh, that's a ample amount of information that we have got about the institute and i hope the students who will be viewing this 
session afterwards get an ample amount of knowledge about the institute and we'll thank help them in the decision making thank you sir thank you for thank you. taking this time out